Hi, my name is Brian Mark and I'm with Greg Francis, my colleague, and we're here to present how we um, shortened the um, compliance of 40,000 devices here at Eli Lilly and Company um, down to um, just two weeks using a, an application called Mobility at Work. Um, to get started, I wanted to share with you um, just briefly uh, a little bit about our company. Uh, we're from Eli Lilly and Company, which is a large pharmaceutical company um, headquartered in Indianapolis, Indiana. And um, it was founded in 1876, and our motto is Unites Caring with a Discovery to Create Medicines that make life, Makes Life Better for People Around the World. We um, support roughly 40,000 iPhones and iPads and over 1,000 uh, Macs in our environment. So wanted to touch on real briefly is our, our presentation will focus on how we improve the user experience and compliance um, by offering more self-service options to our end users. It will focus on the challenge, our plan, and the results. To get started, the, the challenge really was to, um, to identify or to provide information to our users to help them understand what is the compliance state of their devices. Um, so we have 40,000 iPhones and iPads um, that are in a supervised or a non-supervised state and then also um, are managed by us. Um, and the, of the 40,000 devices, we have like 30,000 users across the globe, each speak, you know, with multiple languages um, and in different locations, different countries. And so in order to enhance the compliance for these, these users, what we had, we decided that we wanted to shift compliance awareness over to the end users. And we wanted to enable the end users or empower the end users to take actions themselves to, um, to bring their device back up to a compliant state. Next, we challenged ourselves that we had to communicate to our users directly providing them information without having to pull reports, compile emails, and then send the emails. And we, want, and we needed to really save time in order to help our users get their devices up to a compliant state. We also wanted to reduce the amount of time to return the device to a compliant state and overcome a 24-hour standard, uh, standard inventory update that, you know, as said in Champ, right? And so um, we wanted to speed that, uh, that turnaround time up. And then we also wanted to support the users um, by providing them with all the information that we can and in the instructions in their prefer preferred languages. Another, another challenge that we gave ourselves is that we wanted to reduce the calls to the service desk. And we wanted to, um, uh, we wanted to ease the process of our users getting um, their devices to a compliant state. And then lastly, we wanted to support the interactions between our users and the support teams, meaning the service desk and site support. We wanted to give the users the ability to have the information that they needed up front so that if they were on a phone call with the site support or with the help desk, so that the users knew how to interact and with the things that they should say in order to inform the site support and the help desk about the issues that they were having. So that was the challenge. Now, in order to do that, we, we came up with a plan. We, we formulated a plan that would help, help us uh, meet, uh, meet the goals that we had set for ourselves. And so what we decided that we would do is that we would develop an application that provides the user, the, the current com compliance criteria. Um, it would also inform the user about the current device state. Uh, for example, uh, we wanted to tell the users that, hey, your device is at iOS version 15.6, but it needs to be at 15.6.1 in order to uh, continue to be compliant. So we had to set up some um, direct notifications. We also wanted to, within the application, uh, display this information in a really easy, easy to read method uh, using icons and using, um, uh, 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 we came up with the red light, green light concept in, to inform the users that their device was in a green light state, meaning that it was good to go. It was in a yellow light state, meaning that it was, uh, 
is probably on the verge of being non-compliant or in a red light state, meaning that it was absolutely non-compliant at the time. And so, um, so we came up with this process with this application. We knew that the application had to have these notifications built into it, had to have a, a easy to read user interface. We also set up for ourselves the plan or put in, inserted into the plan, the idea that the communication to the end user has to be quick, has to be automated, and it has to be user friendly. So user friendly to us meant that it had to be um, easy to read, uh, easy to understand, and provide concrete actions that the user could take to return their device back to a compliant state. And so the concrete actions is really how we empower the user to take, to take action on their devices. We also believe that by informing the user and providing them the concrete actions, that we remove the hesitation or the anxiety about uh, that users might have with doing something to their devices. So we decided that we wanted to provide the user interface um, that did all of this, but not only this, but also included other methods of support. Going back to the challenges, we wanted to reduce our, um, we wanted to reduce the number of calls to the service desk, the number of tickets that were flowing into the support teams and stuff. And so we wanted to provide the user with a lot of self-help information via knowledge articles and also via community support. Um, so we, uh, we added uh, within the application, we added links to the knowledge articles. We added links to um, this community support that we have set up, which is across the, uh, the whole company. And then lastly, but not least, um, we decided that our user base probably has a lot of great ideas about how we could improve the application and how we could make it better for themselves and better for us and stuff. And so we inserted into the application a method by which we could um, gather this feedback and, and get ideas back from the user base. And it's been really helpful in helping us develop a, an application that is um, user centric. It really supports the user and it also supports us in, in communicating out to the user. Now, so knowing that we wanted to do all of this within this application, we, we then started the design process and we went through and um, worked with our developers to come up with some methods by which we could get information from Jamf using the API calls and stuff, um, and then also getting user information from Jamf and from other places, bouncing that information up against the device management uh, admin portal uh, where, and that's where we set the compliance um, criteria for, um, for our users' devices. So the results was we saved a lot of time. Once we went live with this application, it was pretty amazing to see the, the, the saving reductions in terms of time and, and energy that we put into uh, getting 40,000 devices up to a compliant state. Um, first way, you know, if we went back, if we were to go back and take a look at the old way, right? The old way meant that we had to write up an email, we had to send it off to a translation team to get it translated, and then we had to bring that email back, and we had to pull reports out of Jamf to, de to determine which users would get the notification or get the emails about their compliance state and stuff, and then work with local IT teams or local um, IT support teams and stuff, send them the reports, send them the email, and then ask them to distribute that out to their users. The time that we spent in order to get 90% of our 40,000 devices up into a compliant state was about four to six weeks. It was pretty amazing. Um, that we would, we every time that Apple made a release that required uh, these devices to be updated, the security patches and stuff, we spent a fair amount of time uh, communicating out to the users. And we also spent a fair amount of time following up with users and trying to get encourage them to update their devices and stuff. But this new way, this new method, we use uh, an application, it's mobility at work. And this mobility at work application, on your on on the screen or in the slides basically 
means that we can send automated emails in multiple languages out to end users. We send automated notifications in through the application itself, and it tells the users in a quick and easy way to update their device and to do other types of things on their device to keep their device mm -hmm. into a compliant state. And you can see here in the interface, um, the yellow green lights um, that uh, help us or help the users have a quick glance so that they can easily discern what they need to do to uh, get their devices into a compliant state. Now, one thing that's really cool here is that um, we recently saw, um, you know, Apple release 15.6.1 for iPhones and iPads, which contained some, some security um, patches, right? And we took a look at those patches and we deemed that those were important enough that we wanted all of our users to get their devices update. And we made 15.6.1 the minimum supported version of, of uh, devices here at Lilly. We made that decision within 24 hours of, of Apple releasing those updates or releasing that particular update. And what's pretty cool here is that has all happened since we made these, made the slides for our presentation. Now we said that it took us three weeks to get to uh, get devices to a compliant state. That was for the previous update that took us to 15.5. In 15.6.1, we went from 40,000 non-compliant devices to 90%, 90 plus percent compliance within two weeks. And even better than the, the compliance numbers that we're seeing is that we didn't have to do a whole lot. Our automated systems, the automated emails and the automated uh, notifications through the application took care of all the heavy lifting for us. Um, needless to say, we are really, really happy with how that worked out. So you can see here, this is, uh, this is, some, uh, this is some old data based on the slides and stuff. But and through the application mobility at work, our compliance state has increased more quickly in, in a smaller amount of time. And we believe that's all because of us setting the standard or us setting um, the idea that users can take control of their devices and know what they need to do to get into compliance state as long as they are informed. And so, um, so and, if we increase the, if we enhance the user experience, we know that the users will take action on it. You know, that's great for the end user. They know what they need to do. They, they know how to do it. For the enterprise and for the company as a whole, the reduction in, in labor and uh, the, the reduction in man hours to get devices, 40,000 devices to a compliant state is huge. Um, what we got also got out of uh, developing this application is, is that we have dynamic reports uh, to management um, that uh, is, is being powered through um, Microsoft's uh, Power BI. And so we gather all that information, we can provide it to management. Um, and that and another important thing or the no, another result of all this is that our global security team is, is more aware and more appreciative of the amount of work and the amount of time and effort that goes into this, but um, they are also much happier with the process improvements in that because we've taken and cut, cut in half or more than half of the amount of time that it takes us to get to a compliant state. One thing that I would like to call out, and which is another another huge win in, in the most recent adoption of uh, 15.6.1 is that the biggest issue that we saw at the service desk, um, mean, meaning people called in, the um, more people called in about this particular issue than any other issue. And that was that they called in and they said that their device is in a compliant state and how do they, how do they, um, make sure that their device is synced up with JAMP and that information is being shared with JAMP. And now all we had to do is tell them to click the check-in button. As you'll see um, in the upcoming demo, there is a check-in button that we put in that initiates a command um, to uh, tell the device to report back to JAMP about its uh, the updated software version, et cetera. And so um, with that in mind, I'm gonna turn the time over to my 
colleague, Greg Francis, um, so that he can share with you a demo. And um, we'll proceed from here. Thank you, Brian. So in this demo, I'm launching the Mobility at Work app. And it will display after it accesses the Jamf API, the data about this device, indicating the status indicators. If I had pressed on the device check-in, it would take me to another screen. All of those carrots takes you to more screens. It tells the users information about those statuses. It also gives the other device information about information that the service desk would ask them to provide. It gives that nice screen. From there, there's more screens off to the side related to the home It's going and showing you more devices that are being managed by Jamf in my name. I can click on any one of those devices and it will show me the basic generic information about that device. These are the notifications that we can send out to users. The second line indicates that we've green-lighted an iOS version and gives the information to the end user kind of what they can do. Next, we can, this is the feedback mechanism we provided to the end users. If they have suggestions about new features for this application, this is the ability for them to provide that feedback. We can give them also then the in-progress status and whether or not that feature's been closed. And lastly, we have the support links that we can give to the person. Knowledge articles that they can link out to. Links out to the mobile community that they can ask our questions to, to the global presence. And then lastly, we do have a, within our service a, quote, Easter egg that we provide to certain individuals to see. Where we proudly show how many days we have worked without an iOS update. Back to you, Brian. Yeah, thanks for that demo, Greg. Really appreciate it. Love the Easter egg at the end. It's kind of like our, our way of uh, providing a little bit of humor to amongst ourselves. Uh, we tried to put that into the application, but corporate communication suggests that we remove that um, because um, not all people would, would get our humor. <laughs> and so we hit it uh, just amongst our, our team. That being said, just to, just to close this out, we are really happy with... Um, how the application has turned out. Uh, we're really happy with, uh, with the time, the reduction in time that people, um, that we need to get devices from zero compliance all the way up to 90 plus percent compliance. Um, and it, across 40,000 devices, it's a major undertaking. So we're really happy with that, um, with how the application has worked out. And we see that uh, as users get familiar with the uh, the application and how we are doing things and stuff, that that time to compliance will continue to um, um, decrease. Um, now is a good time to uh, say thank you for listening and then also pause here for questions um, and please let us know if you have any questions at all. Thanks, bye.